I think that the New Deal was also centered around the idea of the government being a partner instead of the government being, I guess, contributing to our problems. They should be on the problem solving side of the equation. And so what does that mean today? Um, I think in Van Jones' book, he kind of boils it down to keeping green real. And that is the social activist and the environmentalist coming together and approaching government and saying, we don't want you to babysit us. We just want you to take a look at how we're harming the earth and make changes to, instead of harm the earth, help the earth. It will give us jobs. It will give us an opportunity to have some hope in the neighborhoods that don't have as much hope right now. And I think that's the bottom line with the New Green Deal. Alma, can I add one other of thing course. too? And it's this. We're talking about the New Green Deal as if it's only in the United States. But in fact, the environment and the economy is international. And I think one of the most um, exciting things about the New Green Deal is, is going beyond state borders and really to start to look at the international effect of international labor movements, international environmental movements. You know, the dust in China is right here in Chicago, and the waste in Chicago is back in China. So we, we can't look at it as if the United States stands alone. It's one world. Yeah. And that world needs to work together. Other thoughts on, Bell, on, one on of the this, other, how this new deal can come to be? One of the other things that Van Jones mentioned um, is that it starts here in our own communities too. He said even if uh, people who are not working, let's say who are standing on a street corner and they have a gun in their pocket, if they replace that with a Calkin gun, that would make all the difference in the world. And that was something, <laughs> you know, that, that, makes, that truly makes a difference. I like that. Uh, well, i like to speak on that also, actually, because what my business plans to do is to go into these public schools, to go into these private schools, to try to lobby with these principals, or lobby with these aldermen, to try to get my business to sit there and spread this word, to acknowledge these kids while they're young, to, to give them slight incentives, well, the classroom that recycles the most cans gets a free piece a day. So you, so you have to start little, start giving them reasons for wanting to do this, and then later it will evolve into them, okay, I understand that it's bigger than me. I understand this is for us all. So we have a living example of how this can work, the strategy that you're calling for. Yes, Chris. Um, and he also said in his book how we're basically talking about the government, the business people, and us down here as separate people, but he all wants us to have, be on the same level, have the same authority, have the same opportunities, be able to work together instead of still being where, okay, well, they're them, they're us, we have to do things for us. And we also have to focus on that um, people who are in like the middle class and lower class are going to be more focused on things with them at home, while the people who um, have the money will be focused more um, on the international level, like with the polar bears and ice caps and things like that. You're not worried about the ozone level when, <laughs> or layer when, when you're trying to feed your children. Exactly. And that's a, that's a questionable thing. The reason we keep, we keep referring to Van Jones and his book, The Green Collar Economy, is one, he does have a strategy, but two, he's a member of the Obama administration, so this is giving us some idea of at least the way the president is leaning and how, therefore, we can anticipate our own futures. Well, Crystal was saying about how it should go, um, people should be concerned with it in their households. There are a lot of things that you can do that don't necessarily cost a lot of money that can be Absolutely. positive in helping the environment. You can turn your thermostat down a couple of degrees during the winter. You can use energy efficient light bulbs. It's a question can, of everybody exactly. participating. Other thoughts on, on how the green collar economy can really come about? Yes, sir. Uh, right now, the green movement is not all embracing. We have skeptics across the board, in religious circles, in schools, in our own personal life, when we want to make a choice of what should we do next. Is it something that will be convenient for me or something that will be good for the good of everybody? So what part of the solution is for us to reach out, to begin to offer more solutions, to begin to offer more confessions, to begin to offer more strategies and agendas, instead of like accusing each other like, okay, you are the cause of this problem, I'm so good, I don't follow the environment, you are the bad guy or the good guy. We need to reach out and form an all-embracing uh, movement. Well, and because it's one planet, so there can be no heroes and villains. There is no us versus them. There's one one planet. So uh, what you're calling for is echo populism. Any thoughts on that? The idea of going from the echo elite, because it seems like it's all celebrities talking about the green movement, to making it more of a mainstream and more of a universal movement. Are there thoughts? I thought I'd speak Go on ahead. that. Um, 
as a minority within our community, sometimes we have resentment towards those echo elitists, towards those, the people who have the corporations and everything. We need to stop seeing them as the enemy. We feel sometimes as they want us to be oppressed purposely. So we need to take these problems to their door. We need to try to befriend them. We need to try to get them to understand what we're going through is our concern also. It's not just their concern. And we do care about ourselves. We do care. It's not just about our generation now. It's about our kids. It's about our kids' kids. Because this is only one earth as we know of. This is the only place that we can live and habitat as as humans, so we need to understand that it's not us against them. We need to be one, we need to become unified. And we need to look very carefully at, the, at how the children are doing, okay? We need to look at how our children are doing as an indicator that can bring us all together, whether you're upper income, lower income. We have a lot of childhood illnesses that are very concerning, including something like autism, where one in every 150 children in the United States now is diagnosed with autism. What did that number used to be? we don't know why. One in 10,000 30 years ago has become one in 150 today. And that number continues to rise. There's no known cause and there's no known cure. We have no idea why no this idea. is happening. No, there's theories, but there's no treatment. There's no, I shouldn't say that, there's no medical treatment to end it. There are therapies that can be done so the children can function more highly, but there's no cure. Well, I. I live in what's supposed to be a pretty nice neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I've got two nine-month twin boys, and every single day, it's like an autism watch. I'm looking for signs, mm -hmm. looking for signs, and because no one can explain what this is. This is your field of expertise. You read the literature. How can it be that we have no idea at this day and time if our children are gonna be okay? They'll why know, they, won't be? they will know one day, they will understand that these things certainly take time. But I look, personally, this is my theory, I look at what's changed, and what's changed is the environment has gotten, uh, there's a lot of toxins in our environment, there's a lot of toxins in our furniture, there's toxins all around us, there's toxins in plastic water bottles, plastic food, and we don't know what it's coming from, but I would say to bring us all together to find a solution so that the kids can be healthy. There it is, because I guarantee you, those corporations you're talking about, they have children they're concerned that about are, too. Mm -hmm, absolutely. That everybody has a stake in this, and they've got money that we can all benefit absolutely. from. That's, that's how a green economy could really work. And uh, as individuals, we need to make some lifestyle changes too, because it's not just about, as we have been saying, we versus them. But on my individual level, I need to make some lifestyle changes, the kind of things I use, the kind of food I eat. You know, mm -hmm. you can grow your own food. We can do quite a lot of things. And then we, as part of the movement, we need to be careful what kind of message we carry out, because carrying the wrong message at any time, we rub the new deal, the green new deal, a more victory compared to, you know, advancing forward, we now have a retreat. Like for what's the wrong message? Uh, for example, when you talk to somebody, maybe in the religious circle, like the church, for example, it will not be too good to present this movement like bringing out another God out of the earth. Though, but it's better of like looking at the system, the earth as a place we live and we are supposed to be a good steward. So some people say stay. that the green movement is their earth worshippers, and you're saying, that's not exactly it, and it's not, it's really beside the point. And that we really ought to just focus on the problem and not people's beliefs. Yeah, exactly, because like we all live in this planet and we have a future. Like if you look at the book of Collapse, what he's saying in the exciting Montana as an example is the mining of old ages still leave problems to today, which is far more expensive to clean up. So whether I'm going to die in 100 years time, I have to start thinking what will happen to my children is going to live the next 200, the next 300, who will inherit this problem? and perhaps they won't have enough money in the system then to make enough cleanup. And as uh, Sydney said, the problem is international. The sweater we use, the storm is racing coming from China, is polluting our environment, raising more alarm on asthma, and perhaps some of these toxic stuffs we discuss, and the groundwaters are all, all over the place. So it's, and it, it's a problem without border, and we need to just embrace it that way and be more responsible and be good, uh, better stewards.